Welcome to the Problematic Substance Use, a Guide for Managers online education module. This module is based on our practice support tool, Problematic Substance Use, a Guide for Managers, located on our website. In this module, we will cover the mandate of NSCN, the definition of problematic substance use, or PSU, recognizing PSU, the manager's role in addressing problematic substance use, planning for a nurse's return to practice, and transition to practice, and conclude with key points. The Nova Scotia College of Nursing's mandate is to serve and protect the public interest, preserve the integrity of the nursing profession, maintain public confidence in the ability of the nursing profession to regulate itself, and to set and monitor standards for the profession. There are approximately 14,000 nurses registered with NSCN that provide nursing services to Nova Scotians. This includes LPNs, RNs, and NPs. Problematic substance use, or PSU, is defined as situations in which use of a substance negatively impacts the ability of a nurse to practice in a safe, competent, ethical, and compassionate manner. For some individuals, PSU can develop into substance use disorder, which is a diagnosable illness. Unfortunately, for many reasons, including denial, shame, and or guilt and fear of employment consequences, many individuals do not voluntarily seek treatment. PSU may involve legal or illegal drugs or alcohol that may or may not be available in the workplace. Problematic substance use affects an estimated 8 to 20 percent of nurses. It conflicts with the standards of practice for nurses and threatens the provision of safe, competent, and ethical nursing services. In addition, it can affect a nurse's cognitive functioning and judgment, decision-making, and ability to manage stressful situations. PSU has particular relevance for nurses, given that many nurses have access to controlled drugs and substances through their workplace. Nurses and managers must watch for signs of drug diversion, which is the unlawful misdirecting or misuse of any medication. Drug diversion is a serious conduct issue and potentially a criminal offense. The standards of practice and code of ethics requires nurses to maintain their individual fitness to practice. This includes not being impaired while providing nursing services. Fitness to practice means having the necessary physical and mental health to provide safe, competent, ethical, and compassionate nursing services. Nurses typically divert medications using one of the following methods. Taking the wasted portion of medications for personal use, removing excessive amounts of as-needed medications, removing but not administering medications to clients, or administering a substitute medication to clients. Prompt recognition reporting of suspected problematic substance use minimizes the risk to client safety. It also improves early access to treatment, which improves the chance for positive outcomes. It is important to recognize the possible signs and symptoms of PSU in order to respond appropriately when it is observed or suspected. Signs and symptoms may be physical, emotional, and associated with performance and our behaviors. The focus should not be on attempting to diagnose a substance use disorder, but on determining whether a client's safety is at risk or a coworker needs help. It is important to keep in mind that a number of other stressors and or medical conditions may present similar signs and symptoms to those of PSU. In the accompanying document, Problematic Substance Use, a Guide for Managers, Appendix A provides a list of signs and symptoms of actual or potential PSU. Managers play a key role in addressing suspected problematic substance use in the workplace. In order to ensure public safety, it is the manager's responsibility to intervene immediately once they suspect PSU or it is reported by other staff members. If a nurse is impaired while working, the manager must immediately ensure client safety and remove the nurse from the work area. The nurse should not be permitted to return to work until a determination is made that they are safe to practice. This will require an investigation into the events of that shift and the nurse's practice. NSCN recommends that the manager take the following steps. Collect and review relevant information, document findings, present the information to the nurse, and take action. The next slides will review these steps in further detail. The collection and review of information should consist of objective observations of performance, such as increased potential and or actual errors or incidents, increased absenteeism or tardiness, decreased productivity, 
deterioration in co-worker relationships, or obvious changes to the affected nurse's physical and her mental health. In all cases where a nurse is suspected of being impaired at work, a review of the nurse's documentation practice is necessary. In addition, even if there is no immediate evidence that a nurse has been diverting controlled substances from the workplace, an audit of narcotic records and client medication records should be undertaken. PSU may involve legal or illegal drugs or alcohol that may or may not be available in the workplace. Documentation should consist of written records of all reported incidents or observations, including names of persons involved, times, dates, what occurred, names of witnesses, and actions taken. Information should be focused on observations. A documented account of unacceptable performance, practices, and behaviors should also be noted. The use of Appendix A in the problematic substance use a guide for managers document that this module is based on offers the signs and symptoms of actual or potential problematic substance use and is not an exhaustive list. Please keep in mind that many of the symptoms can be associated with other pathologies and diagnoses. In addition, the documentation of the results of a controlled drugs and substances audit will need to be reviewed, as well as the results of the involved nurses documentation practice audit. Once the initial investigation is complete, the manager should plan for a meeting with the nurse suspected of PSU. Notify the nurse with the date and purpose of the meeting in advance and advise them to bring union representation if this applies in the workplace. In advance of the meeting, consider the purpose or goals of the meeting, as well as identify who should be present and possible resources available for treatment. Consult with internal support such as risk management, legal and human resources, occupational health, professional practice, and addictions prevention. Be aware of and follow employer policy, including the process for contacting local police authorities. If there are no policies in place prior to the meeting with the nurse, consult with the nurse's supervisor and HR or risk management if available, as well as an NSCM professional conduct consultant. Meet in a quiet space that has little chance of interruption. The conversation should focus on the objective observations, breaches of nursing standards, and why the nurse's behavior is unacceptable. Following any meetings, carefully document the content discussed, any admissions made by the nurse, as well as meeting outcomes. Depending on the nature of the reported issues, it may be necessary to report the concerns to the manager's supervisor, the facility's risk management, legal, HR departments, or NSCN. The manager must be involved in planning next steps. Depending on the circumstances, next steps could include assisting the nurse in arranging a leave of absence to receive treatment, considering whether the police need to be notified, Identifying potential resources, for example, EAP, primary health provider, occupational health nurse, or mental health or addictions counselors. Contacting NSCN to speak with the professional conduct consultant to receive more information on the fitness to practice process or to report suspected incapacity and or misconduct on the part of the nurse. Or following up and providing support to any parties affected, including staff members and any clients or families. Nurse managers will need to familiarize themselves with the requirements to report suspected incapacity and or misconduct to NSCN outlined in the Duty to Report Practice Guideline and may contact an NSCN Professional Conduct Consultant for guidance. Once recovery has been achieved and maintained for a period of time, nurses may consider whether they want to return to nursing practice. When a nurse has completed NSCN's fitness to practice process, their return to practice will be reviewed by an NSCN committee. Typically, when a nurse does return, there will be conditions and restrictions on their license for a period of time imposed by NSCN. The employer may also introduce conditions and restrictions on employment. Conditions and restrictions may impact the way the nurse practices and interacts with members of the healthcare team. The manager may need to communicate the applicable restrictions to affected colleagues where there are implications for other staff. Depending on the specific conditions and restrictions in place, Co-workers may be responsible for supervising some aspects of the nurse's practice, such as supervising the administration of controlled drugs and substances. If nurses have questions or concerns about supervising a colleague who has restrictions or conditions in place, we recommend that they should speak with their manager. If relapses occur, they should be managed the same way as other suspected situations involving PSU. To ease the transition back to practice, it is essential to have a realistic, structured, and consistent return to practice plan prepared by the manager and employer. 
Depending upon the specific conditions and restrictions in place, coworkers may be responsible for supervising some aspects of the nurse's practice, such as supervising the administration of controlled drugs and substances. For example, where a nurse is supervising a colleague's narcotic administration, the supervising nurse is expected to ensure correct medication administration. The manager may contact NSCN if there are questions regarding the nurse's return to practice. By modeling supportive behavior to the team, managers can facilitate a successful return to practice for a returning nurse. Relapses are common and should be managed the same way as other suspected situations involving PSU. To conclude this module, we will end with these key points. Problematic substance use is a threat to the provision of safe, competent, ethical, and compassionate nursing services. Managers must intervene immediately if they suspect PSU or once PSU is suspected and reported by other staff members. Develop a realistic structure and consistent return to practice plan. The college has additional documents that may help support your practice and can be found on our website, such as the duty to report practice guideline, fitness to practice and incapacity, resolving professional practice issues, standards of practice, and code of ethics. Thank you for participating in this online education module, the Problematic Substance Use, a Guide for Managers document that has been referenced in this module can be found on our website. We encourage you to reach out to the practice team should you have any questions.